Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and as I'm betting you can tell by the hair, you know what kind of review is coming up. That's right, it's finally time for a Beyblade review. Um, Beyblade has been pretty popular, it stayed popular, and it's probably been the one thing demanded most of me that I review. So, today we're going to go over a Beyblade product. Hmm, which one should I go over? Bay wheels? Nah, I think I'll review something that actually works. Now that's a bit more like it. The Destroyer Dome is Beyblade's killer app for the year 2012. It is a large sphere inside which Beyblades with special spin tracks are able to do incredible stunts in battling. The Bay Dome is a large plastic sphere made out of similar material to other Bay Arenas. After applying a few decals, they are held together by a few simple plastic clips. The two large holes in the top allow the Beyblades that have been equipped with the special spin tracks to be placed inside in order to perform the stunts. There's a third hole in the bottom which is held shut by a special plate which allows the easy extraction of Beyblades after they've stopped spinning. Although you can actually remove this centerpiece and turn it into kind of a death trap during the battles. Now the powerful centrifugal forces of the Beyblades inside actually cause it to oscillate a little bit so you might have to hold on to the struts or the dome in order to keep it from spinning around. Now in order to operate in the Destroyer Dome, Beyblades have to be hooked up with special spin tracks that basically turn them into giant wheels. The special spin tracks take the place of a regular spin track and can be equipped onto any Beyblade as though it was a normal spin track. Even gimmick tops such as El Drago and Gravity Destroyer can use these tracks. The Destroyer Dome comes with two spin tracks. A red spin track which is wide and has a narrow tire grip for high speed and a blue one which has a serrated grip in order to gain a better grip on the stadium. The tops they come with are Cyclone, Herculeo, and Spiral Fox. Not the most spectacular Beyblades in the world, but they get the red and the blue aspect. They also come with the spin track parts to make them into regular Beyblades. There's also a special set of Toys R Us which contains very Aries along with a couple more spin tracks which also have their own properties. Each track has its own benefits and color sense and people can experiment with the tracks and tops to see how well they work out. I find the wider tops, such as Very Aries and Hades Curve X, to be the ones that are most effective as they completely fill out the wheel and allow the most balance and outward centrifugal force. It's also possible for some of the larger bays that are low riding to be able to grip the wall on their own without the use of a special spin track. It can be a bit tough figuring out how to use these rides, so this is kind of more of an advanced experimental thing. And as for the actual battles in this thing, when it's between two of these uh, Destroyer Dome special tracks, it actually tends to be fairly short and brutal, usually ending when one bay hits another one. However, something really fun about these is when you use regular Beyblades in them, the fights get really aggressive and brutal, and they just they fly around at each other, they hit each other really hard, and it kind of inverts how a lot of part works. Some parts might be great defensively, but are great offensively inside the dome, and some parts that are offensive on the regular stadiums are defensive in the dome. It's kind of crazy, and there's a lot of room for experimentations, and the sheer spectacle of how these battles can go is a whole lot like how they show up in the cartoon, so these things are great if you want to generate just, a, just an awesome spectacle. Now, do the bay wheels work in it? They probably would, if they worked at all. Now, one can also experiment with the various spin tracks that come with these things to see if they can maybe be used in regular Beyblade battles, assuming they don't get banned due to their sheer size. Thanks to the size of these things and the fact that they cover up the plastic, they are large and heavy and they manage to absorb a lot of shock from combat, making them great for stamina and defense builds. My Haiti Curvex D62 Wide Ball is an even match for my Earth Bolt 230 Eternal Wide Defense and totally thrashes Galaxy Pegasus. So anyway, that's the quick look at the Destroyer Dome. The big thing about the Destroyer Dome is even though it's kind of a bit on the expensive side, it's all about the spectacle. It might not be the ideal thing for the serious competitive bladers who want nothing but uh, to refine their blades to the finest, but for those of you who maybe want to simulate something that happens in the TV show, it is great. It's fun to experiment with once you kind of start coloring outside the lines and seeing what you can really do with this, although you want to keep the, the dome assembled at all times, just having the bottom half is kind of dangerous because the bays can fly out and hit you in the face. The only real problem is that because the fights are so brutal, the inside of the bay dome can get scratched up pretty quickly. 
Oh, that's the bait blade of Stray Dome from Hasbro. Maybe not for everyone, but if you're trying to simulate those epic fights you see in that cartoon show, this thing can certainly generate at that effect. I'm afraid I couldn't do a giveaway this time since there's been a lot of demand for Beyblade review product, I just didn't have any extra to spare, but I've at least given you guys a good chance to look at it and a way to experiment with what else this thing is capable of. So, anyway, until next time, this is Kodak signing off.